The Brown Park Podcast is brought to you by Grow Clinics. They're Australia's leading hair transplant clinics, and you can go to growclinics.com.au. Testing, testing. It seems to be working fine. Hello. G'day, mate. <laughs> we always start our podcast like that. I don't that. know, yeah. <laughs> we're, but we're, we're sitting in a hotel room in Las Vegas at the moment, and we have about an hour to kill before our before we have to leave for our flight. It's gone super quick. We've been here for a week. Yeah, but we thought we'd go over our adventures and some of the weird shit that's happened. Oh my god! <laughs> this week, and this is today's episode of the Brown Park Podcast. The Brown Park Podcast. Question. Question. Okay. Yeah. What was the grossest thing you've seen during our time here in Vegas? Oh my god. Because you know what mine is. Yeah. So I, I need you to uh, come this, up with yours. Is this seriously the way we're going to start it? <laughs> I think I think it's important that we do. Um, <clears throat> grossest thing that I saw was I was walking – we were walking along Las Vegas Boulevard and a woman had an, a lollipop in her hand. Oh, yeah. And she proceeded to take the lollipop out of her mouth and then use the stick – to clean something out of her ear. And then she popped the lollipop back in her mouth. <laughs> and that was a legit story. That's like, oh, my God. Did like we, we, I told you and you almost vomited because you have a very weak stomach. I do. Anything like that? Because um, <clears throat> when I saw <clears> – well, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> he's, it's already he's started. Gonna, he's going to bring it up. I saw a guy mm. coming down an escalator yep. and he just – Blew his nose straight onto the ground. So you know how you press one side of your nostril yeah, and blow like a, out a bushman's blow. Yeah, no. yeah. He did a bushman's blow and it went everywhere. And then he wiped his nose with his hands and then. <laughs> <laughs> then and, he, okay, then he licked his hand. He, yes. That's it. That's it. Move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now let's let's get to the exciting parts of what we've done over the last few. few well, days. I've, I've got a couple of questions for you. Okay, go. Okay, um, I want to ask about your. Uh, need to be somewhere very early. <laughs> early or super on time? S- well, okay, so you and I work in different worlds, We right? really do, um, really, really do. I'm happy to rock up to the airport at the very last minute, go through, I'll wait until I'm literally the last person on the plane because I can't be bothered lining up, and you are want to, and you want to be the first person through, first yep. person on the plane, the whole lot. I just don't like unnecessary stress in my life. I'd like to be somewhere, especially the airport when you've got to catch a flight or something, to be there, like f- domestic flights for argument's sake, you meant yep. to be there an hour before. Yep. I'm there two hours before. Okay, so our flight to Las Vegas, right, left at 10.30 a.m. Yes. And you wanted me to meet you at originally? Quarter to five. Quarter to five. Yes, so we had a 40-minute drive to Brisbane Airport? Yeah, but anything could happen between departing and getting to the airport. If there's an accident, it gives you it gives you buffer. That's what you need, a buffer in your life. How long did we spend at Brisbane Airport waiting? I don't know, probably four hours. <laughs> but we were at the airport and we knew we were going to get on that flight. We did, yes. For me, it's just I, like to have, I don't like to have unnecessary but stress. Having said that, you're a little bit more relaxed on the way out. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. Like of all airports, Las Vegas Airport, we should be there five hours before him. Really should be. Maybe I don't want to leave. Maybe. Mm. Maybe Vegas could be my new home. We'll have to unpack that at some point. I would die. No, yeah. yeah. (laughs) And be broke. (laughs) I'd be the guy I'd be the guy going in the escalator blowing his nose and thinking it's all good. (laughs) The Brown Box Podcast. One of the other things that we came out here to do and I mean you're pretty much like I don't have any ideas, I don't care. You just go with the flow. I do. I really had no thing, nothing that I wanted to see or do. I'm just happy to be in Vegas and have a holiday. And one of the things that I had wanted to do is always to go to the extraterrestrial highway. Yes. Which is outside of Las Vegas. It's like it, it borders Area 51, the yeah, infamous Area 51. About two and a half hours out of Vegas. Yeah. Um, and so you jumped on Turo. And hired a beast. I hired a convertible Camaro. Yeah. Like a brand new one pretty much. Like it was a couple of years old, but it was in mint condition. It was. Mm. And so we took a drive out of Vegas, realised that 
I'm not very good at navigation, so we just left that hopeless. To, left that to ways. A- absolutely <laughs> hopeless. Even when even when you're looking at the screen, you still sent me in the wrong direction. Yeah, I've got no idea. Anyway, I'm normally the driver. Well, yeah, and normally Sarah's the navigator. Well, you need to get better at navigating. Yeah, I really do. Um, so we took the drive out to um, a place called Rachel. Nothing better than driving through the desert with the roof down in a Camaro too. Oh. By the way. It was amazing. Completely windburned the next day, though. Yeah, <laughs> our lips are still suffering, yeah. but hey. But um, that was a massive highlight and something that was incredible. Yep. And we drove out to what's known as the Little Alien Inn. You'd miss it if you blinked. Well, well in fact, and we you did really miss did. It. We did miss it. Yes. It is what it is. It's a tiny little. It's not flash. No. You do it just to say you've done it. Yeah. Um, great photos mm. and all that kind of stuff. But we had gone out there for one mission and one mission, really. And that was to get to the gates of Area 51. And what a mission it turned out to be. Yeah. Who knew that a 2020 Camaro also be an off-roader? <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, the guy from Tiro, if you're listening, yeah, it was completely fine. It was fine. I mean, the car was in good nick when you got it back, so... But the funniest thing, right, we, we've, we've gotten dire- directions to go out to the gate of Area 51. It's not the main gate. It's one of the gates that they have. And the, the whole place is literally barbed wire off yeah. right around. It's like a full military zone. Yeah. And they do warn you that if you try and run through the gate... You could be shot. You could be shot. Mm. So we made sure that we didn't cross that border. But And that's the only line in my life I've never crossed. Yeah, right. Um, so we, we took a drive out there um, and the road was... A dirt track. It was a dirt track and it was bumpy as. And obviously no signage or anything. Nothing. Well, I guess I'm not going to advertise this. Hey, this is where hey, our military base is. This is where the, is. Yeah. Alien military is where the aliens are, so head this way. So we've gone out and we've we've travelled for about 10 minutes and we've sort of gone... Down this dirt road, which is bumpy, yeah. So yeah. Like, it's like, this can't be where it is. No, and we've sort of gone, I think we're lost. We're not lost, but this is not it. We should just turn around and can our losses. We've got to get the car back. It's still another two and a half, three hour drive back to Vegas. And so we pull over for a second... And this other white Dodge. Yeah, yeah, like a Wildcat. No, no, um, yeah, yeah, so what are they called? Hellcat. Hellcat. So it's a really cool car as well. Drove past us and we've sort of gone, we must be sort he, of going. He's got to be right going here. somewhere. What, what else would he be doing out here? Yeah. Um, and so we thought, oh, well, let's just follow him. And we realised the faster you go on that dirt road, the smoother it was. Yeah. Yep. And so we get to the gates of Area 51 and we get out of the car and this happened. So we're at the gates of Area 51 and we meet an Australian. <laughs> Legit, what the same are the thing chances? in a white car as us at the gates of Area 51. Fucking crazy. Christo starts talking to the guy that we started following. Turns out he was an Aussie from Wagga Wagga. We're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. In the middle of the desert at the gates of Area 51 and the only other person that we follow or we bump into is a... Aussie dude travelling through America on his own. Yeah. In the middle of nowhere. Random. So then you proceed to get into your alien costume. <laughs> Doesn't everyone travel with an alien costume? <laughs> it got on uh, Timu? Uh, no, no. Uh, th- th- this was Amazon. 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 And bought himself one of those inflatable alien costumes um, and then proceeded to run towards the <laughs> gates of Area 51, but not quite crossing over the line where you could potentially be shot. It was close. I wanted to just fall over it a little bit, but um, it was um, a good result. And the video for that is up on our socials as well and our YouTube channel if you want to check that out. <laughs> it was a very fun day. Um, having said that, though, by the time we left Area 51, travelled back across all the dirt again, uh, then got back out on the highway, pulled over, had a look at the car, um, and the car was, like, covered in dust from top to toe. It was, yeah, like, full covered in dust. It was, yeah. Like, we couldn't hand it back looking like that. No. And Dion was mildly oh, anxious. A little bit, because cause whenever I borrow people's things or a hire or anything, I'm really concerned about damaging it. Yeah. Really concerned. Like, it, it's on. It's at the forefront of my mind the whole time. Yeah. And there, were, there was a little scratch on it? There was a little black about. scratch that, because I, mean, I was so excited when we picked it up, I didn't actually go around the car and have a good look. And we noticed this. I don't know, three three inch black scratch yeah. on the car, and I, I was like, "Fire out!" That's got to have happened when we've gone down that dirt road, yeah, for sure, because I don't remember seeing it. And the whole way back, he's like, "Wait, for, have you got data? Have you got data? Because we need to look up the photos. We need to because it like there's no reception out there. Yeah, have you got data? We need to find out. Funnily enough, there is reception at the gates of Area 51. Um, 
but yeah, he's, if we got data and then we went through the photos and found the scratch was on the car already. But I'd been worrying about it for two hours before yeah. that. Yep. We got back, found a car wash. How much did the car wash? The cost? car wash cost us $28. American. 28 American, yes. And, and it, it was it, literally it, a three-minute car wash. And it was the shittest car wash you've ever seen. Like yeah. It wasn't like, the, like a hand detail or anything. So then we had to get there. They had guest towels, so we used the towels. Completely wiped down every aspect of the car. I spent five minutes just trying to get that scratch off. Yeah. Even that the, I didn't even do. No. Um, and handed the car back and got a lovely review. And we did, look, we weren't stupid with the car. We didn't do doughies out in the middle of the desert or anything like that. But, no. But the dirt road was my concern. Yeah. But we did it. It was good. Area 51. Go and check out the video. Brown. Park. One of the best things, I think, that we did. Look, we were here to see you two in that brand new sphere that you've, you've probably seen on social media. It's and if nuts. you haven't. Go check it out because it, it is it is next level. Okay, and so that was the main reason. When like I'm a huge U2 fan, um, and when they announced that they were going to do this, and I knew they were going to do it about a year ago, they they sort of made mention that they were looking at being the first band to play there. And I'd hit my wife up and said, "Hey, honey, if this happens, I think I need to go." Yeah, you were, and, you were going to come. Regardless. And my wife is always very very supportive. Bless you, Sarah. Thank you. Um, so when the time came to go, you just went... I'm coming, sure. sure. I'll come for an adventure. I'd never say no. Do you like you 2 I don't mind them. Like, I wouldn't say that I've ever listened to a, a whole album or anything. So we go to the <laughs> Sphere, get the tickets, and, like, we bought the hotel ticket package mm. because that's pretty much all that was available at the time that we could get off work. You know, you spend two nights in the Venetian, which is beautiful. Beautiful. My God, our room was excellent. Check out our socials. Um, he also, by the way, first... Minute we walked in, put five bucks in, five bucks in, and won one hundred and fifteen. Yeah, walking in, but but I reckon it's a thing. Yeah, I reckon they've got facial recognition. They see somebody walk in with a suitcase. Yeah, let's make sure this guy wins, so he's going to come back and then uh, lose it all. I reckon. I reckon there's technology there. Okay. Um, second amount that you put in. Oh jeez, I think it was one hundred and ten. I think. Yeah, yeah. Then I won another one hundred and ten after putting five bucks in. Mm. Was that mm. in a different casino? I don't yeah, know. It's all no, that was a, no, that was the Venetian. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, we, we, we get into the Venetian and, the, you know, we arrive on the Saturday. The concert is on the Sunday. We line up for the Sphere and the Sphere is just nothing short of spectacular. It's amazing. Get into the concert, sitting there waiting, full house, DJs playing. It is chockers and it's chockers. going off. Yeah. Um, band comes on. By this stage, you've had a couple of beers. Had a couple of beers. And they're not small beers in America. No, it's like a pint in a in a in a can. Yep. And about they they belt through a few of the big hits and then they do a bit of a slow set. And when it came to the slow set, you've gone, I'm out, I'm gonna go and get a beer. I need to go to the toilet and I need to get a beer. Yes. Please continue the story. So I <laughs> depart the seat, headed towards the bar and, and lavatory. I go to the lavatory, relieve myself, go grab a beer, go to walk in. And say, can we see your tickets, please? I didn't have any ticket because Christo had the tickets on his phone. Well, it's a paperless, it's a paperless venue, so there's no money, and everything is digital. Yeah, so you had the tickets in your Apple Wallet. Yeah, I didn't have access to your Apple Wallet. No, and you didn't know where we were sitting. Well, because the place is huge, right? So I mean, I walk in the top. He goes, all right, well, show me where you're sitting. I'm like, down there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, I need you to tell me the ticket. Yeah. Tell me where it is. I'm like, it's just, it's down there somewhere. And I'm, I'm looking for you. I couldn't see because it was dark and there was heads everywhere. I even walked down a couple of rows and saw a, a spare seat. So I went, all right, that, that might be him over there. Mm -hmm. Go over there. Nah, not him. So he goes, all right, I'll give you, I'll give you five minutes. You can just stand up the top um, where the sort of disabled area was. So yep. I just stood there for a second thinking that you'd notice that I was gone. Oh, I did. But just didn't care. Well, no, I did. <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> but this is the thing. We're dealing with Dion, and sometimes Dion goes for a walk, and I thought, he's obviously gone for a walk, forgotten where he's sitting, found a spare spot, and plonked his ass down there. Well, that would usually be what I would do. I would yeah. just go, all right, I'll uh, catch you on the flip side. Yeah. Hmm. So I'm like, I, and I did. Like, the people next to me like, where'd he go? And I said, oh, look, it, he's my mate. He'll, he'll wander off. He'll go for a beer. He's found another seat somewhere. He's probably sitting up on the balcony or whatever. I don't know, but he'll be fine. And I'm going, okay, so he's not back. Well, because well, I tried calling yep. you as well, mm. but you had no service. 
Absolutely no service whatsoever. But we later found out that there's Wi-Fi, and had you connected to that, everything would have been good in the world. Yeah, but, but anyway, we didn't know. Yeah, I found out about the Wi-Fi after mm. we'd left the Or concert. did you really, or yeah, you just yeah, had it turned off? Anyway. Um, so you're sitting up there waiting. Yep. And then he goes, mate, you can't stay here for the whole concert. You, you've, you're going to have to leave. And I was like, mate, I came from Australia to see this concert with a mate. We've got tickets because clearly I got this far. And you've got you've got a lanyard around your neck. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah, I was, I was wearing... And wearing a U2 T-shirt. I was wearing a U2 T-shirt, had one of these VIP ticket things, wouldn't let me back in. So, so I left. <laughs> I left. I mean, look, admittedly, me in Vegas on my own is going to be fine. <laughs> is it? Oh, oh well... <laughs> You know, I could have ended up in a gutter somewhere. I, I did come back and you were fairly inebriated by that stage. You're going, I've just bet some money. Well, <laughs> well, at this point, I, uh, I was trying to keep it all level-headed. I was like, I'm a little bit grumpy, mm-hmm. but hey, I'm in Vegas. Yeah. So I had to make hay while well, the sun shone. So I left the sphere and walked back to the uh, Venetian. Yep. And then I just started gambling on the roulette table. Mm. And it was great because... I won pretty much all my money back there for a bit. Yep, and you didn't have me sitting there going, come on. No, yeah, this is boring. Boring, because I don't gamble. So, yeah, no, but I was definitely inebriated. But, well, so, yeah, I, you know, you obviously got a few texts when you get out. Yeah, I got a whole bunch out of texts, and I'm gone, what the actual, what the hell happened? <laughs> um, and I had sat there and watched the entire concert, and it was nothing short of spectacular. Yeah, and like you said, it was the best half that they've ever played, Look, and I, they're talking about it for years to come. The 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 se- yeah yes, the the first half was amazing to kick it, was, it off, yes, and, and the second half just added to it. But mm. yeah, it was if if you get the chance to see this or any band play in the Sphere at some point in Vegas, go and do it because it's amazing. Like the visual is spectacular. Like it's what what do you say? Like normal TV is what four K. Yeah, the, and the, the screens there are 18K. And it's just, it, it's an immersive experience. It's something like 160,000 speakers or something. It's some ridiculous thing. Like, you can actually, it's the first time I've ever been to a concert where um, you can actually hear what the artist is saying. You know how when yeah. you go to a normal concert, you hear, and the crowd goes, and you've gone, yeah, he said something, I've got no idea, or she said something. Um, in this case, you could actually hear every word that Bono was saying. Yes. And you could hear him breathing. At some point, when he's like, "All right, oh, I took it well, out of me," let's well, go. Well, he's getting on. He's getting on a bit. Well, so, you know, yeah. fair call. But phenomenal show, unbelievable. Got to do it. And the half that I saw was excellent. Can recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Brown Park. We'd like to say thanks to our ongoing sponsor, Grow Clinics, who back this podcast and have done for a long time now. Thank you, Grow. Thank you, Grow. And now we obviously we went to America and we got ourselves a convertible. Yes, nothing like being in a convertible. With your hair flying in the breeze. I know. You know, we both had the same idea at the same time because I thought we should talk about how good it was to have hair flowing in the breeze in a convertible. To the point where we needed hats because when we stopped, it looked ridiculous. It was incredible. And it it was um, one of those moments where I I fully relished the fact that we had gotten grow done. We had hair. So thank you very much to grow for that. And uh, we were going through some of the old photos from our previous trips that we've done when we didn't have grow in our life and to which we do now so look growclinics.com.au go there they will make an absolute difference to your life if you've been considering it go and see what they can do for you because it changes the game it changes how you feel about yourself so if you want hair to be a pain in your ass (laughs) go see grow because it's a good pain to have yeah growclinics.com.au you can defy genetics with grow Follow the Brown Park podcast on socials at Brown Park Official. I'd like to unpack another thing that I've noticed about you because we've we've done a few adventures, right? What you've got a list? I have a list. I've been I've been noting stuff Uh-oh. to talk about. This on like the a, I mean, oh, this is this is like a therapy no, no, session. No, or, no, no, uh, okay. not at all. But all I've right. just I've noticed some things. One is your. And we've joked about it a lot, not on the podcast, but in real life, because we've done these adventures, right? We've gone to Chernobyl. Yeah. We've gone to Bali. Yeah. Um, we've gone to Dubai. The, Dubai, the Formula One, a whole lot of stuff. And that's what we do. Your body goes into shutdown. Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, it does. <laughs> so when I'm traveling, mm-hmm. I, d- I can't even explain it. But usually my body just goes into a shutdown as far as go into the toilet to do a number yeah, yeah. two. So, yeah, I can, like, when we, you know, go camping for 
three days. Yeah. That, that you would don't be, shit. Yeah, no, I don't. Legit, and I don't feel like I need to either. It's just my body goes, all right, this, isn't a ni- this is not a nice place to go and do a number two, so yeah. we'll just hold off until we can get somewhere decent. It's it's great. But, like, we've gone to, to campsites where they have facilities. Yeah, but they're not they're nice. Not clean. No. But, you know, yeah. they're still better than a Las Vegas restroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, very, and that's why I didn't go to any of them. But um, yeah, yeah, no, l- legit, I can go three, four days without, without, you know, making it, making a deposit. That, <laughs> so to speak, but it didn't happen in America. No, America's a different story. I wonder why. The food <laughs> must. Yes, <laughs> so it's all of the food. <laughs> oh my god, and and the drink, the margaritas. Maybe it's maybe that's my key to my key to going to the toilet when we're traveling is just drink more tequila. Have more margaritas, margashitas. I'm going to go do a margashita. <laughs> um, one of the discoveries that we've made while we've been here, and we're always looking for the next business idea <laughs> um, when we go out on these adventures, like when we were in the Ukraine, and they're everywhere now, but they weren't anywhere then. No way. was the mobile photo booth where you stand on the stage or stand on this little platform and the iPad spins around and now they're at every single everywhere you go and at the time we said we need to do that in australia yeah we investigated it and just went not too much work to our basket um and like and now they are everywhere it's on every corner here in vegas sometimes even you'd you'd go 10 meters and there's going to be two yeah um and and what we found coming to vegas this time and we think we found a million dollar idea and i really think it's going to take off yep dog crocs drocs Crocs for your dog. We saw a dog wearing Crocs here, mm. and I remember going, I would love a pair of Crocs for my dog. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure my dog will absolutely hate it. But this dog was just rocking down the street with a yeah. pair of dog Crocs on. He, he was rocking down the street in his dog Hot Crocs. pink dog Crocs. Yep, yep. So if you like the idea of dog Crocs, we're going to be taking order shortly. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're really not investing in dog crocs. Hey, don't say never. The Brown Box Podcast. So we've unpacked a little bit about what I do. Yes. When we travel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing I've noticed about you, yeah. especially this trip. Yep. So we had the Camaro and we took it out through the, the desert. Of Nevada. Of Nevada. Yeah. A long open road. Yeah. You know, roads going straight ahead for as far as the eyes could see. Oh, weren't the roads nuts though? It was... Look, it's when I mean, I've driven out west of Australia and I've seen long straight roads. Yeah. But this was next level, like you could just it was just as far as you could see, yeah, you know, yeah. over the undulations and everything. You oh, yeah. need you needed me to pull over a lot I know. so you could take a wee. So and it reminded me of when I was a kid. I my parents always had this joke that I used to piss on every tree whenever we went to a holiday. You're like a dog. Making you terrible. But- I haven't been like that for a long time. And then I realized that we'd been obviously in Vegas having a lot to drink. Mm. And the previous night we'd had one of those tall, tall 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 boy. Is that what they're called? Yeah, tall Tall boy. boy. So I'd had one of them. I had a white claw. Mm. And I remember all night I kept waking up needing to pee because I was also drinking a lot of water because it was frigging hot. Yes. So, and then we went for breakfast and I had two cups of coffee. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. And then we hit the open road. Hit the open road. The open road, we're going to keep driving until we get to Area 51. Yeah, it's no, we stopped, three, we stopped three times. On the side of the road, you have to wee. Twice. In the, in the desert behind whatever bush could be found. Yeah, like one of the Joshua trees. <laughs> and me, me as a kid, if we went anywhere with the family, my dad was not stopping. Oh, like, really? He was, he was. Look, I don't know where I get it That's from, so clearly. Mean. But he would be, it'd be like, if we were hungry or anything and we were driving from Sydney to the Gold Coast, it'd be, all right, next time there's a service station on the on, on this side of the road, we'll stop. Yeah. And we'd see it coming and we'd be going, dad, 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 there it is there. Yeah. And he'd go, oh, sorry, missed it. And he'd keep driving because oh, he just, just wasn't going to stop to where he got to going. But you, oh. we had to pull over so many yeah, times. Yeah, I had total. Happens at your age too, though, I think. Fuck you. It says we, you've hit that point in life where you need to wee every five No, minutes. it was just that particular trip. It was just I felt like that just sort of set the joke for the rest of the holiday. But mm. it was, um, yeah, like I I would never pee on the side of the road. No, no, you don't. You mean you're a nervous peer. I'm a nervous peer. Yeah. So, and I like to be in a stall by myself, no one around me. Mm. Um, 
And that's a childhood trauma that I'll unpack one time. Oh, can we? Sure. No. Yes. Um, but I would never do that, but I had no choice. I had to – and we we did have strict rules with me needing to do that because mm. I would get out of the car and go, do not film this, do not do a fucking thing with your camera because I do not want to see this pop up on our socials. Do not drive off. Don't do anything stupid. Yeah. And it's like, even I have a line, and that line is we. Yeah. But I was like a parent towards the end of the trip. Now, Christo, have you been to the toilet? Yeah, do you need that. to go to the toilet? And sometimes you would be like, no, I'm good. And then I'd raise my eye at you and I'd be like, really? Really? We've and got you, a long stretch now. <laughs> We've got a long stretch. Do you need to have a pee? And then you look, look in your defence, you go a lot easier than my daughter does sometimes. So you just went off and you did your wee and you came back. Well, I remember as a kid, right, we did one journey. I don't know what it was. And it was like a travelling circus between the Gold Coast and Melbourne. And I remember my father had spent literally an hour trying to overtake this travelling circus at the time and had gone in between all the trucks and, you know, had done the duck and weave to, to overtake it all. And when he got to the end of it, I've gone, I have to go to the toilet. Oh, nah. And so he's nailed it, right? Absolutely frigging nailed it to the next town. Found a toilet. He goes, you've got like a minute. Run. And so I ran in, and as I was running out, vroom, 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 and he's just sitting there going, oh, Jesus, the whole circus passes by. That's because you were waiting for a cubicle, wasn't it? You just probably. didn't want to just – Yeah, there probably. you go. Probably. Thank oh. you. One of the other things you do – Oh, good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we've done some pretty crazy things over over our adventures. Yeah. Done some what what you would call, you know – Sketchy, relatively dangerous things, you know, walking down side streets of Ukraine. Yeah, that was stupid. Um, that was just to take photos too. That was stupid. We got pulled over by the police. So we've done that. We've done yeah. a few other things. But you've got one level of safety in your mind that just you can't stop doing and I've no. never done in my life. I don't know why, but I always have to latch the door shut of a hotel room. So when we're inside, every time you would go to leave, if Christo was the last one in – You'd have to put that security lock, you know, that yep. one that you'd have to slide across. So on the off chance that somebody wants to get into your room, they've got like a two-second struggle. Yeah. I don't get it. And not once did I get a thank you for saving your life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't understand. I don't that, know either. I think out of all the hotel rooms in that casino, there would be like, I don't know, I'm going to say there'd be 2,000 rooms. Yep. Your concern that somebody is going to come into our room mm-hmm. – to do what? I don't know. I think it, I think it's because I'm, you know, obviously a dad, and when you travel, I want my family to be safe, so I always latch the door. Do you latch your front door at home? Yep. Hang on. No, you you lock it. I lock it, but I'm always the one that locks the house up. So if we go out, my wife's like, oh, we're only going to go for half an hour. I've gone, how long do you think it takes to, to rob a house? But I get it when you're not there. Yeah. But the fact that... But when <laughs> we're in it... <laughs> when you're in it... Yeah. And we're, and the only way you can get in is with a swipe card and we're 15, 16 floors up. Mm. Or, yeah, I don't know. And, and then to top that off, we mm. did leave the room one day oh, yeah. because oh. Christo was the last one out. Oh. He left the door. How do you put it? So, so you could leave the door unlocked by pulling the door handle all the way up. Yeah. So we, we leave the room. We get back to the room. The, <laughs> <laughs> the hotel room doors open. Yeah. And you also left the safe open, yep. which had our passport and our cash. And this was on like day number two. So all the money that we had was mm. sitting in that safe, plus passports, plus everything. And that was open. So you, you're, ped- you're pedantic enough to lock the door when you're in it. But hey, when you leave the hotel room, knock yourself out as oh, long as I'm not in there. Okay. But I've, I want to say, well done, because you hid your emotions very well on that one. Because I know that you were probably like, "You fucking." Well, how many times? Were, dick. How many times were you? Oh, what on the um when when, the door when I did it? Because I'm sitting there going, "Well, is he going to lose that me?" Because this is like pretty stupid. No, just and another adventure. Like, no, no wait, we lost all our shit in, in Vegas. And, yeah, but um, well, I mean, at least if the stuff was gone, we could blame somebody for breaking in. But this was just down to your stupidity. Yeah, thank mm. you, mm. thank you very much. Round punk. So your reputation precedes you. Oh God! In what in what way? <laughs> in what way? Okay. So so there's no secret you like a drink. Indeed, I do. Yes, and you can put quite a few away before it impacts my behaviours. Yeah. Yes. But America, they free pour. 
Yes, they do. So that's why I feel so comfortable there. Game on. Mm. It was ridiculous. Like, okay, so for those that are listening overseas, we have very strict liquor licensing laws in Australia. So if you buy, I don't know. Say, well, well, let's say you get a vodka and soda. You, yeah. You're going to get the barman pouring the vodka into a little cup that is measured. 30 millimetres. 30, 30 mils. 30 mils, and that goes into your cup. Yeah. So, and that is the amount of vodka you will get. That is one standard drink. Yeah. You can ask them to – can you ask them to do double shots I now? Think you, yeah, I think you can, but they, they won't do like a triple or, yeah. or something like that. They reserve yeah. the right to refuse. Yes. Um, and it's, it's, it's exceptionally strict as far as alcohol laws go over here. Um, like a Long Island iced tea in America I reckon would be a blackout drink. Oh, yes. But in Australia is, uh, is literally 15 mils of each – yeah, each, whatever it goes into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in America, it's just like the more you tip, the more you get. Yeah. Yep. And that happened. <laughs> Margaritaville, Margaritaville. So I figured out a bit of a hack towards the end of the trip, specifically. Yeah. So we we went to this Margaritaville. Jimmy Buffett's. Yep. Margaritaville. Yep. Can recommend. Rest in peace. May he rest in peace. But his bar to live on. Um, so you get a seven dollar frozen margarita. Best value on the strip. Best value on the strip. Can recommend it, like you said. Yeah. But there's a hack that I learned. Mm-hmm. For that $7 frozen margarita, mm-hmm. you ask for an extra shot mm-hmm. of tequila in it. And I swear to God, they fill half the cup up with tequila. Yeah. And it was only like it was, was only a couple of bucks extra. Yeah, a couple of bucks extra. And then if you tip the barman, he'll throw an extra a bit more in there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And like because it's a frozen drink, but because they put the frozen on top of the – Tequila they've just poured in. Yeah. The whole top is just like a shot of tequila before you get into it. It's like the, this little iceberg sticking out of the top of a sea of tequila. It's, it's the most beautiful iceberg I've ever seen. Holy hell, man. Also, obviously, we, we need to discuss your $29 American oh, yeah, good point. vodka lime and soda. Yeah. Well, so we're sitting at the bar at the Venetian. Yep. It's a pretty plush joint. Very yeah, flash. Yep. We did step it down a notch going to Planet Hollywood. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No. The, the ticket package that we booked to go and see U2 um, in the sphere was – it was a Venetian accommodation package. package yeah. Yep. So, yeah. And that room was excellent. Yeah. So we go down to watch the Formula One by the pool. Geez, our life suck. Listen oh, to this. Terrible. Oh, my God. What, what was my <laughs> life? Um, so, we, yeah, we go down. We're watching the, the F1. I think it was like 9 o'clock in the morning or something. Yeah. 9.30, something like, something like that. Um, you order a coffee. Yep. No harm, no foul. That's what you do. It's that time in the morning. You probably should have a coffee. I thought, you know, I'm on holidays. going to watch the F1. I'll order myself a vodka lime soda. Yeah. The bar chick goes, do you want a small or large? Well, you know, it's no brainer. It's, it's Dion. It's always, it's always going to be large. Be large. Yep. <laughs> Don't even make the offer. So you go off, get your coffee. You come back. I've got my, I wouldn't even call it large. No, it, it was, wasn't that large. It, it was just a, a, a large well, – it, it was a plastic cup. Like a small coffee in America was bigger than what you got. Yeah, there. yeah, totally. So she she puts this vodka soda down in front of me. So was it a free pour, by the way? Because I missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coffee. I think it was a – look, I wasn't really watching. Yeah. But it, it, it's it, – so let's be honest. It's vodka and water. Yeah. She puts it down in front of me and she says, uh, is that on a room? I said, no, no, I'll pay for it. She said, that's $29. <laughs> and I'm too embarrassed to go. What the actual? No, I'm like, of course, no drums here. Look, I'm I'm loaded. Here's twenty nine bucks. Yeah, sure. Me, meanwhile, I'm thinking, my God, thinking to myself, his ass is tightening on the seat. Yeah, going, yeah. Oh, I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to pay this for a drink, but I've come too far to go back. I can't put it back in. That was the longest I've ever seen you sit on a drink. Well, I had to. Well, you know, plus I was conscious that it was nine nine thirty in the morning, and I didn't want to go getting, you know, shit face because yeah. that was U two day. Yeah, oh yeah. True. So I was conscious of that too, but um, yeah, to sit down with a twenty nine dollar vodka soda was that was, ridiculous. was that was a new a, a new high for my life. Well, we did the currency conversion while we were sitting there. Yeah, look, yeah, because Chris so highly supported my um my <laughs> my decision to purchase that he wanted to actually just you know make me feel better about it. It worked out to be forty five dollars Australian. Was it, it forty five bucks for it's one drink? Forty five bucks for one vodka lime and soda. But then you can go down onto the strip and go to Walgreens and get like a tall boy beer for four ninety five. Well, this was the hack that we also learned. That's the yes, this is a hack. You go to Vegas, go to Walgreens. Get yeah, go drink. to Walgreens, get your ID out, go and buy a beer. They do margarita in a can. They do all these sort of things. 
are like four bucks and you can walk the strip. You can walk the strip. But drinking tips with Dion. But but be aware, um, one day I didn't have my wallet on me. Oh, yeah. And if you're in Walgreens, you buy a drink, you need to show ID. Yeah. So I'm like, Chris, I don't have my ID. Can you just grab my beer for me? So yep. I'm walking around with the beer in my hand. We get to the register. I put it down. And she said, where's your ID? I said, it's, it's not mine. It's his. Yeah. And she was like, no, well, you touch it. You need to show me your ID. Yeah. And, and I went, no, 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 it's mine. I'm going to have it. She goes, yeah, I know, but he touched it. He touched it. I need to see both your IDs now. And I'm like, oh, no, doesn't matter. I'm like, don't worry about it. So then we went on to the next Walgreens. And, and bought um, the same thing. <laughs> I don't know what it is about ID. So even at the Sphere when we went there, yeah. I went to buy a drink from one of those, well, no, it was Not an automated machine, machine yeah. but I had to show ID. Yeah, yeah. And the guy there said, no, we don't accept foreign driver's license. Yeah. Maybe you just look fucking sketchy. I don't know. <laughs> I think I do. Brown Pock. You know, we talk about grow clinics a lot on this podcast because, you know, they are the major sponsor of the show and we want to say thank you to them. Um, but if you have been looking in the mirror lately and you are thinning on top, particularly guys, but also for women, and you'd like to do something about it, then you need to go and check out the brand new Grow Clinics website, which is growclinics.com.au because they've given it a re Nothing like a good zhuzh. Zhuzh it like your new hair. Yes. Um, you can go and have a look at some of the before and afters. They've also got a transitioning option where you can go from what the person was to what the person is now and their actual photos taken in their offices, not like, you know, you know how sometimes you see these before and after shots, we'll go weight loss for one, um, where they have like a really bad lighting shot and yep. the person doesn't look great and then they have like a glamour photography. This is not like that. They have a before and after taken in front of the same wall in their offices so that you can actually see what the difference is. They're very transparent with what they do. Absolutely. And if a hair transplant is not quite your thing yet and you just want to see what else they can do, there's a range of other options for people that are investigating what they want to do about their hair loss. I mean, if you just want to slow it down, there's medication for that. They can thicken up your current hair. Uh, so just talk to them. They can even give you a beard if you really want to. You, you can have a hair transplant for a beard. Now, I can't personally grow a beard because no, I've got a little gap in between my sideburns and when my beard starts. Yep. So maybe I need to get a little gap fill. There you go. Go and get your gap filled. Go, get, gro- a, go <laughs> no, get your gap wrong. filled. No. <laughs> anyway, defy genetics <laughs> with grow. Sorry, go bro. to growclinics.com.au. The Brown Box Podcast. I think when you go away on holidays, a song becomes the anthem of a trip. It's almost like a, what do you call them, an earworm or something? Yeah. yeah. And I was kind of hoping that, you know, having spent all that money and going all that way to see you 2 one of my life bands that maybe <laughs> one of their songs might, like their new one or whatever, becomes the earworm of the trip that you're constantly singing. Mm. But no. No, no, it wasn't. No. There was a guy on the Caesars Palace Bridge that we went past on night number one. I Must think have been night was. one. It was early on. We'd had a few under our belt by that stage and we were just walking the strip and there was this guy on the bridge singing this song. Something like, you don't got to be a baller. Yeah. To give me a motherfucking dollar. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, that is brilliant. I love this guy. Yeah. And we'd walked on and we were singing the song. It was in our head and whatever. And then later on we've gone, oh, we should go back and we should film this guy because the song is now stuck in our head. Yeah. It's like the next day and we're still singing it. And so a couple of days passed. We, you know, had other adventures and whatever. And then on the last night we we were there, we went, okay, well, let's. Go back and try and find him. Let's see if he's still there. See if he's there. And he happens to be there. And he has this song and you said, give me a couple of bucks, let's go, and we'll put the dollar. We're going to film it. Yeah, and we're going to film it. And you went up and asked him to sing. And he sang this song. Have a listen. If you put a buck in my cup, I will shut the fuck up. But you ain't got to be a baller to give me a motherfucking dollar. I am a socket. You are the plug. Please put a dollar in this motherfucking cup. (laughs) Now that song gets stuck in your head. I guarantee everyone listening to this is going to be going in their head. You don't got to be a baller. Give me a motherfucking dollar. Yep. So I was talking to my daughter and she's gone, oh, that's a so lit guy. And I've gone, what? And she goes, yeah, he's all over Instagram and, and, and TikTok and everything and Snapchat. The, he's quite Insta famous. And I'm like, what? And she goes, yeah, yeah, no, I've heard it. I've already heard the song. And she's gone, I can't believe you got the whole song off him. Well, that's what a dollar gets you. I've gone, 
what do you mean? And then she went and told her friends who were all like, oh, my God, you met the So Lit guy. I think there's one takeout here that we're completely missing. Yeah. It just goes to show how little money there is in social media because this guy's still singing on the bridge, yeah. <laughs> not like a baller, asking for a motherfucking dollar. Follow the Brown Park podcast on socials at Brown Park Official. One of the things that you also wanted to accomplish on this holiday and you kept seeing a big sign for it was a deep dish pizza. Oh, yes. I've, I've never done one of those big-ass deep dish pizzas that you see in the movie, you know, the ones that are, like, I don't know, like half an inch thick. Do they maybe, have them in Australia? I think there's somewhere in Sydney or Melbourne. Okay. There's someone that does them somewhere, yeah. but I've never been able to get there. This pizza was a monster. And we'd walk past there a couple of times going, yeah, we'll get to it, we'll get to it, we'll get to it. And then on the last night we were kind of like, all right, fuck it, let's go and do it. We weren't even super hungry, but it was just something. Had the ticket off. Had the ticket off. And this pizza was a beast. The only thing that bugged me a little bit was the weight. Oh, yeah. Because well, we know I, mean, I, I am working through my impatience. Yeah. But when you order a deep dish, dish pizza, quite yeah. clearly it's going to take a long time to cook because there's just so much. There's 14 litres of cheese yeah. in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're sitting there waiting for it, waiting for it. I just kept looking around, giving the, the waitress the look. And she's mm. like, don't worry, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And then when I ordered it, I said, is it enough for two people? And she just went, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, amateurs, yes, you'll be fine. Amateurs. And then it comes out. Holy Jesus. It was everything that I ever wanted. Like I never want another one again in my life. No. Until I go there again perhaps. But yeah. well, I remember eating this going, this tastes exactly like I thought it would. Yeah. Copious amounts of cheese, all meat. Yeah. Oh. oh, my God. And it was insane. And, like, we got through – Two pizzas, two pieces, not two pizzas, Jesus, two pieces, and we were both like, there's still two pieces to go. We've got to do it. Not leaving that here. We've got to do it. And it was literally a heart attack, heart attack on a plate. Mm, mm. It was insane amount of pizza, but it's just an insane amount of food. And there were people sitting there sharing a large of these between yeah. two people. And I'm like. Admittedly, though, I would have liked to have ordered a large one and then put a little bit in the fridge. I know I said I had enough at the time. Yeah. But to think of having that cold might be another another level of awesomeness. Yeah. I don't know. But the food over there is just insane. And it's actually, for Australians now, with the dollar the way it is, it's very expensive. Everything's ex- – well, for us, it's on par. With, like if you're paying $15, $20 for a piece of pizza in, for a pizza in Australia, that's what you'll pay in America. But – it's double the price when double you're taking the tax. Yeah. Because, I mean, if it's fifteen ninety for a pizza, then you've got to add tax. 18 bucks. And then convert. You convert 18 bucks to Australia, you're looking at, you know, 30, 30 bucks. Mm-hmm. Easy. And and one other tip that I would highly recommend, and I know this now that we're, we're back home and uh, my wife was going through uh, my credit card statement. Just seeing if there was any, uh, you know, mm, yeah, no. questionable uh, to trips to any she questionable to bars. Does not have to worry about that. Um, is the uh, fees. Every time you make a purchase on your card, it's going to cost you a dollar to $2. So I didn't even look at that. Yeah. Every single international purchase. Plus, so is that $2 plus, our money or is that $2? No, $2 our money but plus the conversion fee. Just go over there with cash. But like anything, holiday money doesn't count. No, it's like the calories of the deep dish pizza. God. Do yes. not count. No, but it's worth it. Yeah. So let's talk about... A disappointment of the trip. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Let's talk about that. <laughs> yep. So you're a Tesla driver. Yes, 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 yes. Of which one of the Uber drivers we had wrote me off. She's going, I hate Tesla drivers. I went, I'm a Tesla driver. That was on, like, the, oh, yeah, on, on the way out of there. You're yeah, fine. Yeah. She was lovely, though. Yeah, she, she was, was good. So you're like, there's a thing called a Tesla loop here. We've got to go check it out. Yeah, it's the Vegas loop. The Vegas loop. That's it. Well, I've heard about the Vegas loop yep. for ages, right? So Elon Musk has this company called The Boring Company. Mm-hmm. It's where he just talks about his life and everybody falls asleep. No. Um, kind of like this podcast. But anyway, yeah, yes, kind of, yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, the boring company and what they do is they obviously bore tunnels underground and stuff like that. And he's had this idea that he can revolutionise transportation in cities by going underneath the cities. And then what happens is you have these Teslas that are driverless mm. that just drive you through the tunnels from one side to the other. So they experimented with this in Vegas and they've developed the Vegas Loop. Yes. And I've said, I so want to go and try this. I want to go and see what it's all about. Go and have a look. So we we jumped on the deuce. The deuce, the bus that goes up and down the strip. Um, and we had to get it to the convention centre. 
Mm. So we get to the convention centre. It, mind you, it's about 35 degrees. It's hot. Hot as hell. Yep. So we get there. We head over to the Vegas Loop. Yep. I'm like, oh, this this is going to be pretty cool, hopping in a car with no yeah. driver. And I'm selling it going, this is going to be driverless underground. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be excellent. And I'm like, this this is going to be quite quite the adventure. Yeah. So we get there. And we said, oh, how much is it? And they said, no, you can just have a go. And we've gone, oh, okay. Okay. Free. There's, like free a free the, free adventure. We're literally in. nobody waiting. We were the only ones there. I think there was one other car full of people there. Yep. And that was it. That's and a bit of a telltale right there, but yep. unless we move on. And so they've gone, jump in the car, and I've gone, isn't it driverless? And they've gone, No, not not yet. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. And I've gone, oh, okay. So literally we jumped in a Tesla, they drove us through a very short tunnel. Which is only two foot under the ground, so it's not even like a you know, I wouldn't call it a real tunnel. You can drive through Brisbane. Hey, we could have we could have done the the, the Gold Coast to, to Brisbane trip in the, your car. The Clem Seven. The Clem's <laughs> the Clem Seven. We could have gone through the Clem Seven in your car. Yeah. And it would have been probably well, better. The Sydney Harbour Tunnel in a Tesla mm. in peak hour yep. was more exciting than the Vegas loop. Yes. <laughs> but now but now, now we know. So if you're in Vegas don't take the time to head down yeah. to that end of the strip because don't. you're going past Circus Circus. You I mean, you're up, you know, yeah. what you'd effectively call the arse end. Yeah. Don't waste your fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> so while we're talking about disappointments. Yes. So before we left. What have I done? Well, <laughs> I thought I had us all, all hooked up, right? So I jumped on the Air Canada site. I picked our seats so we we oh, we, 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 we ensure we're sitting together because, yeah. you know, there's stories where you get split up and you want to be next to the people you're travelling with. So exactly. I went, all right, sweet, yeah. good. Look, I've jumped on. I've picked our seats. We're good. <laughs> the night before, uh, you go, hey, I've just moved my seat to one over so there's a gap in the middle. Yeah. And there was. So, there was nobody in the middle at that stage, by yes, the way. Yes, well, well, apparently. Okay, yes. Yeah. So, 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 so it was a good move. It was a smart move. <laughs> smart move. Okay, so I'm on the window. You're on the aisle. Yeah. Gap in the middle. Yeah, thinking we're in the clear, not a chance. This is, this is like, you know, you, because you, seat. You, you hear people talking about it. It's like a, a, a flying hack, win-win. It's almost, like it's, it's almost like a premium economy upgrade for nothing. Yeah. Leave the gap in the middle. So we got on the plane. And we're walking down. We and again, we're up the arse end of the plane. Yeah, I think all thirty-seven. Yeah, walking down, doo 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 doo. Yeah, trotting down, and in the distance, I'm up, look, because I'm counting ahead. Yeah, and there's one lonely dude <laughs> in sitting the distance, in the middle seat, sitting in the middle seat. I uh, know, <laughs> and it was our row, and I was just like, oh my god. So then we look. He look in his defence. He he moved. He jumped over to the window for us. Yeah, he loved it. He had a really good night's sleep. I reckon. <laughs> I hopped in the middle for the fourteen hour flight. Yeah, you're, you're in the aisle. And just before we we're about to take off, well, while the plane was still boarding, yeah, there they, was a there was a couple of seats still scattered around. It's like, oh yes, win. You can just jump over there. Yep. So I did. Yep. I jumped in. There was one right in front of us, and there was a gap next to the person. I said, hey, I'm just going to sneak here, and she's kind of looked at me weirdly. Now that in hindsight. I realised why she was looking at me weirdly because there was another person's bag sitting underneath the seat and it wasn't mine and it was somebody else who'd just gone to take a nervous pee. <laughs> she came back and I went, oh, my God, this is your seat. I'm so sorry. And so I went back to my seat. People around us kind of giggled a little bit. And then the the message came across going, ladies and gentlemen, we've now closed the doors and we're going to get ready for a takeover. And we've gone... Bullshit, free seat right there. Let's go. Jumped out, jumped straight into that seat. <laughs> and these two people hobbled down the aisle. Yep. And just, they didn't, she never actually said anything to me. Didn't she? She just stared at me. Well, of course. You're sitting in a goddamn seat. And I went, hey, this is yours. And she went, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Get in And then gave me stink eye. And like by this time, everybody around us was aware of what we were. Everybody trying was to do. watching the circus. That was was Christo yeah. trying to find his seat. Yeah, and so I got up and did a bit of a bow because everyone was laughing by this stage. And then we did fourteen hours stuck in <laughs> right next <laughs> to each other, stuck right next to each other. But so yeah, you know your life hack. But it was this. It it is a memory that will stick in my head because there wasn't many people on the plane at that point in time. Just that one dude yeah. off in the distance, in that middle seat. And can I just point out right that I was incredibly uncomfortable moving seats. Like I, was, I, I would was, never do that. Wouldn't you? No. 
Right. No. Nah, so when it was like the first one, I've gone, oh, I'm not doing this again. And then when there's one and you literally got your foot on my back oh, going, get the fuck out and go move. Out there. I was kind of like, oh, okay, well, all right, I'll go and do it. And then when the people came, I just felt this red wash go over my face. Like, <laughs> well, you were ducking down lower and lower by the time you got back in your seat like yeah. a naughty dog. So, look, that was our adventure in Las Vegas. What a trip. What a whirlwind trip. A whirlwind trip with lots of stories that have come out of it. If you want to see any part of it, look, um, we, we've done a lot of posts up on our socials over the last couple of weeks, uh, which you can go to Brown Park Official and go and check it out on either um, Instagram or TikTok or, or Facebook. Threads, even threads. Threads, yes. Threads, that's a thing. Yes, for you three people that are on threads, go and check that out. Um, and we're also in the middle of trying to post more to YouTube as well at the moment because we are a two-man show that does everything. <laughs> if you like what you hear, please subscribe. We've got another episode coming soon. And now it's time to try and catch up on some sleep. Yes, please. We'll see you next time. We'll catch you later. The Brown Box Podcast. Why are you happy? I don't want to be sad.